slowly moving along here. I didn't get my RGB lighting installed, but I did have some rope lights thrown up there that I had laying around. They're not LED, they're actually incandescent. I don't, I think they're just tungsten, I don't think they're halogen, but they do definitely generate a little bit of heat. But anyways, kind of adds to a little bit of something up there. Uh, about this camera, this is that front row thing that I got. Uh, very cool camera. Turns out this particular one has some glitches. I've been talking back and forth with the uh, high tier tech support over the last few weeks and they're actually going to replace it. Uh, it's got some problems like the audio gets all weird, it'll zoom in and out for no apparent reason and I don't know, it, the electronic image, stabil the electronic image stabilization has been a little bit strange. So anyways, you're going to see some footage from this in this video. Uh, it, it'll get better. It's one of those things where I was like, uh, I don't like it, but uh, whatever. It, you'll just have to deal with it. I, I think I'm picky over things. I, I can't stand it when things are not wide angle and the audio is weird, particularly the audio. But anyways, just an update on that. They're going to be sending me a new one of these. So we uh, shouldn't be having the issues that we have been having. Okay, so... Not every trip to Goodwill Bins is a success story. I got this kind of a cool looking um, power strip thing. It has this little hatch, which I just broke off. I think that's supposed to go on the bottom and like direct the cords and all this stuff. But uh, yeah, it's got a nice flat switch, right angle plug, and I was like, ah, sweet. This is gonna work great. Again, I need to keep moving my MacBook so I'm not smashing it. I got this thing plugged in and it was like the cord was literally this much too short. Like, if the angle of this cord had been different, it would have reached where I was trying to mount it. The other thing I noticed too when I plugged it in, the little green light that said not grounded came on. Now I thought that was strange. You know, this, this being a building that has building codes and all sorts of things that would make sure that it is grounded. And I was like, eh, whatever. So I decided just to kind of sort of make this work. It wasn't quite long enough, but I went to stretch the cord out and then suddenly, let's pretend it's plugged into the outlet here, suddenly this thing went like that and it was still plugged in. As it turns out, this has a obnoxiously loud clock. This has a swiveling cord. I was like, oh, sweet, okay, problems are solved. So, plug the thing in, plug some stuff in, and power switch didn't seem like it was working. Then I smelled burning. Then I looked at this thing and I was like, oh, see this looks like it's melted? That's because it is. And I'm pretty sure that's why it was at Goodwill Bins. I thought, okay, uh, I can just cut this thing off and get a regular cord to put on here. Uh, the swivel thing is kind of cool, but not necessary. But then I realized I'd have to spend money doing that, and I don't want to spend money. There's screws on the bottom of this, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this thing apart and see if we can just directly solder whatever's going on here to whatever's going on here. Seems like that should be a thing that's possible. Because, uh, you know, why spend money when you don't have to? But yeah, whoever had this thing before, this cord clearly became melted. And uh, let's see what we got here. Assuming it'll open, it probably welded itself shut. Well, I assume that taking out screws would do something, but this thing ain't coming apart. Whatever happened here got this thing hot enough to actually melt the two halves together. This is not coming apart. Dang, that sucks. I was hoping I could just open this up and like directly solder whatever swiveling is going on in here. There we go. Um, somehow both the pieces landed right here. <laughs> oh, no wonder this thing failed. Look how terrible this is designed. It's using these rings of contacts with 
little metal tabs. What's this thing rated for? This thing claims it's good for 1875 watts. And all of that is going through these little tabs that are just sitting here. That seems, that seems, that seems absurd to me. Wow. Yeah, so you can tell this thing got hot, that's for sure. This little spring, I think it's kind of, well, intended to fly across the room, but also keep pressure on this, but, uh, boy. Yeah, that's a pretty bad design. I should probably just go to the hardware store and buy a replacement end to put on here. Or I could go back to Goodwill Bins and find an extension cord and cut that in half. That would probably be super cheap. Let's do that, actually. I like that idea. By the way, the reason we're screwing around with this project is I need to get some power attached to this. And my thought was to mount this, like, over here or maybe over there or something like that. So I've got electricity up here. Because right now I have one outlet right here behind uh, the Amazon ALEXA. And the other one is down here and it's also a little bit full. By the way, I was on generator. Uh, yeah, and this one has little mounting thingies on the back. So we'll go in search of something for less than 20 cents that we can replace this with, or I'll spend up to $2 on an entire new one of these, uh, which I'll have to do a little bit more inspecting. If I was looking close, I probably would have noticed how this was melting before I bought it, but alas, I was not. I will, however, be bringing the diagonal cutters because I might need these. Two more power strips that were very, sorry, my gum. <laughs> I found two more power strips that were very similar to this. One had the exact same connector, and it also had a very similar looking defect. And to be honest, even if um, it was in perfect shape, I wouldn't want it because I do not need 15 amps of awesome going through little stupid tabs. So we went old school. I found for a dollar ten this, uh, metal power strip. Now, uh, the thing I like about these, as you can tell, it holds the plugs very firmly, but these use standard house outlets, so they can be replaced. This thing can be repaired, and it has an actual extra circuit breaker that's separate from this switch. We've got a light here to tell us when um, the light's on, as opposed to these, where the circuit breaker and everything's built into one stupid thing. I would prefer to have components that are Okay, it rattles, but I was gonna say slightly more robust. I was planning on taking this thing apart anyways, though, to uh, make sure no one opened this thing up and dropped a handful of uh, drywall screws in here before they donated it. I can't think of the name. What is this stuff called? It's like universal, it's not Unistrut, it's universal shelving, or I can't, I can't think of the name of it. It's the stuff that you basically just use a hammer to disassemble it, and gravity sort of holds it together-ish. <laughs> I 
Nice. Okay, we have solder balls. Seriously? There was solder balls floating around in here. We have some very basic wiring. What are these capacitors for? That's weird. Anyways, everything in here seems to be up to snuff as it were, so we'll go ahead and put the lid back on. That little solder ball fell out of somewhere. Looks like... There's a little bit of melting here, but I'm pretty sure that was from assembly. Like, when they were building the thing, they went a little bit nuts with the soldering iron. Because you can see there's a little bit of the plastic on here too, but... It does not appear that anything got hot enough in here to cause any damage. Uh, there's just a lot of dirt in here. Yeah, I'm a weirdo when it comes to things being built to last for a while or maybe be repairable or something like that. I think the general idea here is going to be something like that. Yeah, that looks good. You can plug things in, still have access to the circuit breaker and stuff. I went ahead and mounted this thing kind of on the uh, diagonal here and I was able to loop the zip ties through a couple of the holes. That way it's a little easier to get to and I don't have to try and plug and unplug stuff that direction, but uh, I guess we should probably make sure it works now and that that switch isn't somehow screwed up. Well, it would seem as though it turns on. Let's uh, plug this fan into it and see what happens. Oh, what do you know? It works. Well, ain't that fancy. Well, we have electricity now. Uh, if you remember about last time, I uh, went to get those free crates on Craigslist and they didn't wind up working out. But I was also talking about a free workbench. Well, as it would turn out, the person that was going to get the free workbench never showed up. So, they just called me, or sent me a text and said, hey, come get the thing. So we're going to do it now. I was already out running around, and I'm driving the green van, which doesn't have a lot of room in it. And I'm also not entirely sure how big this workbench is, but it's made out of the industrial shelving, so it looks like it should be able to come apart. Um, they said they left it in the driveway and they're not going to be there. So this might be interesting. Trying to fit things in the van. Also trying to take them apart. I don't know. I think I have a rubber mallet in here, but I'm not sure. If not, we'll be disassembling this thing with, uh, my Gerber multipliers. Um, yeah, so let's see how this goes. All right, let's see here. Oh. It's down at the end of this little driveway. Aha, there it is, under a tarp. Okay, let's see if we can get this unloaded. Looks like they have security cameras, so I'm sure they're watching me. Yeah, that's definitely gonna have to come apart. It's way too big to fit in here. Let me see if I have any tools. I thought I had a rubber mallet in here, but I'm not sure if that's the case. Let's take a look. old armrest. I'll just use this armrest as a hammer.
How's it going? Good. Picking up free shelves from Craigslist. Ah. Yeah, um, I thought it was a little big, so I forgot to just take it apart because it yep. uses these uh, little Did connectable things. Um, do you have a hammer by chance? Yeah, we do have a hammer. Awesome. Right. Yeah, that'd be sweet. That's the only thing I'm missing. Okay. <laughs> cool. Got the rest of it taken apart. Then... Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. In the back of my mind, I was kind of wondering if a neighbor would hear all the noise and come out. So this is actually perfect. Looks like they're moving out or something. Yeah, yeah they already are. Oh, gotcha. And Sweet. I just happened to be out in Wilsonville, and they uh, they emailed me and said, "Oh, hey, no one came and got it, so you're welcome to it." So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was wondering, I'm coming down this driveway and I'm like, hopefully the people know that they're giving stuff away. And... I didn't know the other day, which is <laughs> I consider myself a neighborhood or flag lot walk. Yeah, yeah, because people start showing up and taking stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll work. Cool. And then uh, I think, let me see how tall is that? I think if you slide them in here, I can kind of stand them up. Kind of lay it down. Yeah, like that. Cool. Okay, got it? Yeah, cool. Let's see here. Ah, just fits. Perfect. <laughs> Actually, I think this is okay. It's not going to go anywhere. It's pretty well wedged in there. We'll just have to avoid doing uh, brake stands, and I think we should be alright. We have to back all the way out of this place. Okay, well, in case you missed that, um, I showed up there and it was on this weird little cul-de-sac. And I was kind of thinking in my mind, I wonder if the neighbors know that they're giving away free stuff and I'm not just here stealing things. So uh, I grabbed that. Is this stuff gonna fall over? I'm just looking back there. I think we're okay. Um, I grabbed that armrest and I was gonna start whacking on it with that, which it might have worked, but that hammer was a godsend. But yeah, those uh, two ladies came out and said, hey, how's it going? Do you need some help? I have no problem playing the cripple card in that situation. <laughs> ah, so we got a free adjustable shelf made out of that uh, I forget what the stuff's called. It's not Unistrut. It's uh, some sort of industrial shelving. I can't think of the name of it right now. But yeah, so that's actually handy because now I can put it back together in the uh, shape and height that I need. I'll probably have to replace that plywood though because it's just particle board that's super crusty and wouldn't really support the weight of anything. But yeah, awesome. Oh, uh, by the way, particle board also makes me sneeze. I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's because it's been outside forever or what exactly, but mm, allergies. Can't remember. Is it particle board or chipboard? I thought particle board was like, oh wait, no, maybe that's OSB, oriented strand board. Well, anyways, this is the plywood that's uh, made from a bunch of sawdust that's uh, glued together and treated with formaldehyde, whatever you call that. That's what this stuff is. That's what makes me sneeze. A bus just pulled out into traffic and some guy in the other lane that I was in flipped out and slammed on the brakes. So all of our stuff has shifted. It hasn't actually fallen over though, so I think we should actually be all right. Um, I think I can just push that stuff back. But boy, did it make a heck of a racket. Well, I think after having to slam on my brakes, the stuff just kind of shifted forward. So, maybe I can sort of push it back. All the steel is still where it go, is supposed to be. Uh, none of the steel fell over, so uh, actually, I lied. There's a couple things over here on the floor. Um, 
Of course, my grabber stick is back there, too. Uh, so as it turns out, I think I'm properly stuck in here. Um, yeah, a bunch of that angle irons down there on the floor blocking the wood. Uh, let's see here. I've tilted my chair all the way back, and I think, there we go, got that, and then, oh, okay, I think we're good, all right. Stay, okay. the uh, steampunk chair and uh, should be able to get that stuff loaded out of there. This chair, I don't have the range of motion that I do in the other chair, plus it's kind of big. Uh, I think I'm going to leave all this stuff in here for now. Uh, I'll come get it later. I'm tired and I might actually take a nap, which is odd for me, if you know me. I don't take naps. Although this has been a pretty early day today. Oh, that's right. I somehow ended up with a platter of deli meats and cheeses. <laughs> kind of forgot about that. Oh, I wonder if there's gonna be room in my fridge for this giant thing. Oh, huh, look at that. No problem at all. There's nothing in here but empty cardboard boxes, cheese wrappers, and heavy whipping cream. Managed to get the shelving and stuff in here. Uh, got this bench primarily set up. I'm not installing the drawer right now though. I'm still trying to figure out the height that I want this thing at. Right now, uh, my joystick fits underneath here, no problem. And it's a pretty good height for my arms and everything. It may be a little bit too tall though. Um, so, I don't know. We have to figure out what to do here and also figure out the placement of this thing. I don't know if I want it here in front of the window. Uh, there was another shelf on the bottom that I'm probably not gonna use, so I can use the plywood for that to put up on the back. But then if I do that, there won't be any light coming through this window. So, I have to figure out the setup here. Got all my camera and other storage equipment stuff in there. Um, one problem is the heater's right there. Otherwise, I would stick this thing right there. But, uh, eh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. At least I got this thing now, and it was free. Okay. Well, a little bit of a mess in here, moving everything around. But I think that's going to be the place it's going to live. I readjusted the shelving so the heater doesn't interfere with anything there. Although I did just install this drawer. I guess that is wood. And it's a little bit closer to the heater. Um, maybe I'll put some diamond plate on here or something. I don't know. We're going into summer months, so probably won't be using the heater. Um, obviously, my joystick doesn't fit under here anymore. But I can just come up here at an angle like this. Or, you know, even fold in the joystick and... Seems to be at a pretty good height, but eh, I don't know. I'll uh, probably have to cut out this other piece of plywood over here and uh, make a hole for the thermostat. That way I can put some pegboard or something up there. But anyways, slowly getting things set up. I still need my RGB lights up there though. Okay, well, we were going to look at this chair, but there's some construction work going on over there. And the construction workers are smoking. So, 
I need to not be in this garage until after they're gone and after the ventilation system has recirculated the air because, yeah, breathing and stuff. I just realized that I'm horrendously ill-prepared to work on the brushes on that chair because I don't have any canned air. Chair, air, I wasn't trying to rhyme. So I'm gonna check on uh, Prime Now Delivery and see if they have any reasonable reasonable prices on one or two hour delivery for whippets or canned air. What I think that is referring to whipped cream, but anyways, um, air duster. That's it, air duster. Air duster. And of course, as per usual, I'm flush with gift cards for Amazon, so uh, showing up black beans and corn. Uh, Air Duster did not match any products. To order some canned air. It looks like Amazon doesn't sell canned air. How can they not sell? Okay, I must be typing this wrong or we're doing the wrong keywords or something here. How is, does Amazon not have it? Okay, well apparently you can't buy that stuff, so. Yeah, I'll just take the brushes out and at least look at what's going on for now, as far as like getting the particles out of there. Uh, I'll have to figure out something else on that. Oh, we do have an electric tire inflator. It's not high pressure, but it might work. Anyways, let's just go down there. Okay, let's see what we can figure out on this thing. Oh, that reminds me. So, this chair had a problem with the neutral lever working. Um, I wonder if that's one of the reasons. See, the one on the other side works fine, but this one does not. I wonder if there's something going on in the gearbox that's actually causing our problems here. Well, regardless, I'm gonna go ahead and pop out a uh, lower brush here and see what's going on. Looks like there's some oil or grease or something on here. What the heck? Hmm, smells like burning motor. Some sort of liquid in there. I wonder if the uh, the seal in the gearbox went out and filled the actual motor full of grease. Oh yeah, that's pretty gross actually. Yeah, you can see there, you got a bunch of chunks and all kinds of stuff going on there. Um, there is definitely something going on, which makes me think that uh, Maybe our gearbox is leaking into the motor assembly. And that would actually cause a number of issues. I mean, obviously connection issues with the motors, but also running the uh, gearboxes without oil in them. So it's looking like we might have to actually remove the motor from this chair to figure out what's going on. So this got a little bit more complex than I was hoping for today anyways. And also I took the jack I left the floor jack, the miniature aluminum one, uh, at storage. And I would need that to be able to lift this up and get the tires off to get the motor out. So I think for now, I'm just gonna put the thing back together and uh, we'll deal with this project another time, I guess. Well, maybe it would be a good excuse then to upgrade the motors on this chair because I've got some four pull ones that would work in this thing. And uh, Give it a lot more torque, actually. Oh, come on. Okay, well maybe I'll leave it apart. I can't get that back in there right now and I'm, I'm tired of screwing around with this at the moment. When I was at storage, I grabbed the mini aluminum floor jack. So we'll be able to screw around with this chair. I'm probably gonna do that, well, not today, I got some stuff going on, but maybe, well, tomorrow is actually super busy too. Oh, tomorrow, uh, there's a We Small Abilities Expo here in town. I'm going to be checking out with a friend. It's a pretty small one and it's just in like a hotel lobby. So I'm not expecting anything too crazy exciting, but anyways, maybe Sunday or some of the next couple of videos, we'll get that red chair taken apart and see if we can fix it. I'm, I'm pretty sure the grease seal has gone bad between the gearbox and the motor, and that's why the brushes are all covered in sludge and why the thing keeps turning left when you try to go straight. Anyways, 
I will catch you guys soon.